My name is Ned, this is my little buddy Jai, and today we're going to continue along with our project building out a financial forecasting dashboard for a construction company. Now in the previous video, I gave you a little bit of info about my background, and then we talked through and wrote out this requirements document right here. As you can see, it was nothing complex. We were just writing out an intended usage of the dashboard, a user profile, so who are the users that are gonna be using this dashboard, what the users are going to input into the dashboard, and then what the dashboard should output. Now, whether or not it's your company's policy or your team's policy, putting together just a simple requirements document like that always kind of helps you get centered in a new Power BI project when you're just kind of getting started. Now, the next step of working on something like this is starting to kind of mock up not only the different screens that you'll have in the dashboard, but also the data model that's going to be behind the dashboard. My favorite tool for this is actually a tool called Excalidraw. I think that's how you pronounce it, but uh, it's a pretty much a free to use tool. I think they have some enterprise licenses, but you can just kind of open it up and you can put together these really cool diagrams. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. I'm gonna be showing you how we kind of go from this requirements document into uh, some slightly more detailed drawings as well as a simple kind of data model diagram. So opening up the computer here, it means that we're pretty much ready to get started. And this is the website excalidraw.com. And I like to kind of start by first putting together our core Power BI screens, right? And so let's call this Power BI screens. Now, if we bump back into this requirements document, you'll see that we have a user input screen and then a output screen. And this output screen will be used for the CEO. So that's probably what the report should open out onto. And then these user input or this user input screen will be used by four project managers. So when we're kind of building this out, we're gonna have our summary screen and that's what I will call this. So I'm gonna go right here and we'll call this our company summary. And then we will have a input screen. And that input screen, I think we actually probably need to have two input screens, right? So the first input screen is going to be for loading the new a new project. So new project budget input screen. Or let's let's I think I called it new fiscal period budget input screen. And then the other input screen is going to be a uh, like kind of like a edit period uh, budget input screen. So that's really important. So once someone saves a record, they might have made a mistake and they might want to edit it. So these will be kind of the two different directions that these will go. Now I'm going to turn this box blue because just to indicate that it is a input right and then i'm going to change this box green just to indicate that it is a summary now on this screen what i'm kind of envisioning right is we will have a title bar up here and then we will have just a simple table now on this simple table we're going to need some navigation so we're going to need probably a filter right and then we're going to need like buttons to move over to like input or edit. So, you know, one of the things I always like to do is kind of think about what Amazon does, right? Because Amazon spends way more money on UI development than you or I ever will. And so they understand what works for people. And if you go to amazon.com, what you'll notice is they have a bunch of buttons along the top, and then they have a bunch of buttons or navigation along the side. So we will put just like a simple date slicer right here. And then we will put kind of two button inputs right, right here. And we'll make these probably all be about the same size. So they will be lined up. And then finally, I'm probably imagining some metadata of some kind in this. So let's get these all lined. All right, so we'll go do, do, do. All right, so we'll get these all nice and aligned. So I'm imagining probably some metadata of some kind or like some notes. 
and we'll leave a little bit of space over here for those that notes section and that was Jai crying because he wants some treats now over here on the input section it's going to be probably a lot simpler right so again we're going to have kind of our title along the top and then we what we are going to have is we are going to have our input screen right here and i will probably put my inputs along the top right here and then within that we will put a little save button probably right here right so there'll be a save button and then down below we'll probably have a secondary table right where they can see all of their prior stuff that they've entered. And so within this little inputs, right, we'll have all of the different accounts that they might want to input right along here, right? Now for the edit screen, I think they're going to have kind of a couple of different options, right? So again, I think they're gonna have this title bar this header around here, right? Which is why we want this to be really consistent. Then they're probably going to have like a delete record section. And so that would be all these records right here. And then we will put like a delete this record, right? And then we'll put like an adjust this record. And so this will be right here. And this, if we make this long, we'll put kind of like a little slider right along here, right? And so here you can kind of see the different layouts that we're going to be getting and just a really quick input and mock-up. So now we have kind of a rough guide and a rough idea of the requirements that we have. We have a rough guide and a rough idea of how we're going to build and have the report look, or at least kind of the different objects on the screen, which then means that we're now ready to build out our data model. Now, Power BI, as many of you probably know, really loves star schemas. So that's what we're going to try to build here. Unfortunately, because we're going to be using translatical task flows, which require kind of like a read and write back, we're probably going to have a bi-directional relationship, but it will be a bi-directional relationship of one to many. So from a fact table to another fact table. So let's get started on building out that Power BI model. So again, I'm going to be sticking to Excali draw, but instead I'm going to be moving down and we're going to be using squares to kind of represent Power BI tables. So we're going to have our core we're going to call this fact uh, forecast or fact budget. I think I've been calling this budget, but I said financial forecast in the titles probably. So we're going to be calling, we're going to have a fact budget table. And let's make this kind of small, right? We don't need a giant square like this. And that fact budget table is going to be filtered down by the department, right? So we said we we're going to have four departments. So we're going to have department and then uh, outside of that, we're then going to have our edits, right? Or like our change log. Well, actually, I don't actually know if we need that. And this is why this is why this doing this kind of diagramming is really cool because this input screen right here is going to be writing to this fact budget table. This delete section right here is going to be deleting records out of this fact budget table. And then this edit section right here is going to be editing or adding records into this budget table if we're doing a type two table. So I actually, I actually don't think we need to do that, which is really good because then what that means is that we can have kind of a star schema right in this Power BI report because we're then going to add in a fiscal year or like a fiscal calendar, right? Because this is going to be periodic. And then we're going to have a count dimension table, right? Because they're going to be forecasting on accounts. And then we probably should have a user or a person or like kind of an RLS 
table, but since this is just four people and it's going to be for the CEO, right? We probably don't need that. And instead we can put kind of the department head names in this table here. So what that means is that we're ending up with pretty much a perfect star schema, All right? So we're gonna have our fiscal calendar, so our date table, our department table with our department heads, and then our account table right here. So when we're talking about this fact table, right, this is probably going to be pretty skinny is what I'm thinking. So we're going to probably in this table have a few different things, right? So we're probably gonna have like an account ID, a fiscal period ID, a department ID, and then the actual like value that was put in. Now this actual value is going to be modified, right? And so this is what's actually gonna be written, which means that if we wanna retain knowledge, right, we probably need a primary key right here. And then we need a is current value, right? And then just in case something, well, I, I guess that's okay. What I was gonna say is we could have basically like some user checks, right? So we could say, hey, only this person from this department can edit this record. But I actually, I don't think that's super necessary. So I'm gonna now kind of expand these tables to show right here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this color right? Because that is our fact table. Then we'll make our dimensions blue, right? So our accounts, we're going to expand this down, right? So we're going to have our account ID. And then we're going to have an account description. And then we're going to have an indicator. Now, if you remember, we separated our accounts into income and then cogs. So we're going to have a account description of if it is income, right? And we'll go income flag, and then we'll have um, probably a cogs flag in here. So these will be like true or false columns. The fiscal calendar, what we're gonna have, right, is this is gonna be periodic, so they're only doing this monthly. So what we're gonna have is a uh, fiscal period ID, and then we'll have the English, fiscal period, we'll have the um, fiscal year, right? We'll have the fiscal year period. And then um, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could also have the uh, fiscal quarter and then the fiscal year quarter, right? So, there we have kind of our info right there. And then we said in our department, right, we're gonna have our department ID. So let's kind of move this up. So we'll have our department ID. And then we will have our department ID. We'll have our department name. And then we will have our like project manager name. So that is going to be our simple data model. So look at all this planning. All we really have to do is we just have to export this and then bring it into our requirements document right in here so we can go mock up. And I had already exported one of the images and put it in my documents or no, on my desktop. So here we are dragging that over, right? So here is our mock-up. And then we need to bring over our data model right here. So we'll go ahead and we will export out that data model. And we're gonna have to drag some of this down. So we'll drag this down, right? Data model right here. And here will be our data model. So we will export this as a PNG, right? So there we go, exporting this as a PNG on the desktop, which then means that we can now track this over and there is our data model, right? And oh no, I lost 
some stuff. So let me quickly fix that. And just like that, we are back. So again, we have our intended usage, we have our mockup, and we have our data model. So we have like a very cohesive requirements document, and we're now ready to get start building. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. If you enjoyed seeing me kind of power through that in it ended up being 15 minutes but power through that in 15 minutes building out that power bi requirements document please consider subscribing liking the video leaving a comment it means a lot thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one